try Plan B. <laughs> It's on that one? Okay. Um. I can't believe this. Not sure if I can connect, connect to you all three. Explicitly written into their contract. You can bring one of those You can accept the other one. Is that one off now? Oh, I got the state of Israel. Huh? Okay. If you want to maybe roll it forward, um, and then the people up here, they've seen this presentation a couple times, so um, you have, you all have what you need to talk about and see, and you have the slideshow up that we need to look at it, right? Okay. Sorry, this is not being cooperative. PowerPoint up there now, or is it still my desktop? No? Okay. Hang on. <laughs> yeah. Okay. bearing with us yeah, here. <laughs> All right. The video system seems to be degrading. Anything? Let's see. You see that now? Yeah, I'm not 
sharing a particular screen. Thanks. It usually just shows the entire screen. It's a wonderful presentation, I can tell you that. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> and, okay. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Hmm. It's like my, my mouth even showing up already. Yeah, okay. It's, it's extended. Oh, I know what I need to do. There we go. Okay. It was connecting to the wrong screen. I have two screens upstairs, so. Okay. Thank you for bearing with us. <laughs> so this there we go. <laughs> so good morning, everybody. I apologize for the technical difficulties. Um, we did this last week and it went seamlessly, so I apologize for that. Um, we appreciate you taking the time to come to our listening session this morning. Um, this, the main purpose is that of this is to, for, for our community members to have a chance to tell us your thoughts on the new library, but we do have a, a short informational presentation first. We'll take a, a, a small break after that, and then we'll have some time for questions and then public comment. Um, we do have some village board and library board members here today. Not everybody could make it, but those folks that can't will be watching the OCA media recording uh, later to make sure that they do hear your, your comments. Um, I do want to start with a few introductions. So I'm going to introduce the folks that will be talking and answering your questions today, and then I'm going to let the village board and library board members around the table introduce themselves. Um, so I am Jennifer Way. I'm the library director. I live in Oregon, and I've been the director here for three years. Um, do you want to start next, Brett? Yeah, sure. Uh, my name is Brett Roddinghouse. I'm with OPN Architects, and we were been a part of the project for a while now. I'm Jenny Nelson. I'm the library board president. I'm Elise Cruz, I'm the Director of Planning and Zoning, and I've been in this position for two years. I grew up here in Oregon. And I'm Jeff Fine, I'm the owner's representative for construction. And then um, we're gonna start with village board members, starting on the corner. Okay. Uh, hi, I'm Amanda Peterson. I've been on the board since 2017, and I'm on the library building committee. <laughs> hi, I'm Mike Wunsch, I'm a village trustee, been on the board since April. And I'm uh, Randy Glish, Village President. Derek Bilo, Village Board, uh, was elected just this last April as well. I'm Kyle Severson on the Library Board. Um, and I apologize, I know that the slideshow is a little hard to see, especially with just one screen. We will have the slideshow uh, linked on our library website, and if you'd like to receive a, a copy of the link, um, if you stop, we have some staff um, sitting in the corner there behind the TV. If you'd like a copy of the presentation, you can let our staff, uh, Laura, there know, and she will make sure it gets emailed to you on Monday, okay? Um, so for today's session, we're going to start with a brief presentation of background on the new library project, um, a little bit on where we are now, and then um, to show you all the different um, alternative sites for the new library that have been suggested. Um, we're going to take a short break after that, um, and then we'll have a, a short question and answer period. So if anybody has questions on the presentation, we'll, we'll respond to those. Um, and then the, the most, most of the time will be dedicated to um, community feedback time. So we'll have a form we hand out during the break. If you'd like to take a turn to share your feedback, you can fill out that form for us so we know you want to turn to speak and then we'll invite you up for a three minute turn to speak um, after the, the break and the questions. Um, so the, the form that we'll pass out, you can use if you have a question about the presentation, if you would like a turn to talk during the public comment, or if you have comments to share but don't feel comfortable speaking, you can also write those down there. Um, we also have an online comment <laughs> form, so if you prefer to type those and take that home, Laura can give you a, a little handout with the web address on that. It's also linked on the library um, website. Um, Sorry, the technical difficulties has thrown me for a loop, so thanks for bearing with us here. So I'm gonna turn it over to Jenny Nelson, who's gonna just give us a little background on our project. Hello, everybody. Oh, I'm not good with this microphone. So, hello and welcome. 
Uh, my name is Jenny Nelson, and I live at 127 West Grove Street here in the village. Um, if you don't know that area, North Main Street, um, the new site would be in my backyard. Um, I've lived in the neighborhood for 15 years and uh, have watched the community grow from 8,000 to 11,000 people. I volunteered on the library board for um, four years ago and have been the president for almost three years now. I'm also the co-chair of the fundraising committee and on the library building committee. I'm telling you this so you kind of understand how much the library in Oregon kind of means to me. In early 2019, the library board staff worked with the community to hold 35 plus hours of listening sessions, speaking to over 130 people from different community groups. This was done to understand the needs and vision of the Oregon community for their new library. The vision included children's space separate from the adult reading area, a place that kids can be a little loud and explore bookshelves and meet new friends. A space for young adults to be separate from younger kids to pick out books or just hang out. Quiet places to sit and get lost in a book. There was more requested of the library than just places to get books. The library staff asked for a space to be able to spread out and work instead of having six people in one small office. They asked for adequate storage for the materials they need for community outreach and everyday programming. We were asked to provide computer and internet accesses and much needed spaces to gather. People wanted places for teens to go after school and a study break or attend a program. People also requested spaces of different sizes to hold meetings from Girl Scouts to board meetings that didn't require utilizing a private business's space. They asked for maker spaces where programming can be held allowing librarians and community members to teach in a messy way. And a dividable conference space that can hold story time, youth sports night, or a New Year's Eve community event. We heard the theme many times of wanting a third space, not just a library, but a community gathering location. Hearing this vision, we were able to come up with a preliminary design that laid out all of these requests. It took the shape of a 16,500 square foot floor plate on two stories, giving us the needed 33,000 square foot of building space. That the floor plate, we wanted, they wanted that floor plate ideally on a four acre lot that allows green space, adequate parking, water retention, and the possibility of future expansion. The last few years, I've learned a lot from the designers and library staff about creating efficient libraries, layouts for a library. There are a lot of pieces that interconnect that I would have never guessed. I was taught that libraries work best when they're two floors or less. This allows the, the staff to be connected to each other and help be visible to, be, to more patient, to patrons. Sorry. The more floors there are, the more staff is required, and the more it costs to operate the library. I discovered the importance of having a book drop into or right into staff workspace. It allows for less transport of the books and provides a quieter experience for the general public. I also realized the importance of having easy access from the parking lot to the building for patrons with mobility restrictions or parents wrangling their small children. I also learned that meeting spaces mean more to library staff than a place for the public to sit and have a discussion. A large, flexible conference room gives Ms. Kelly a place to host 60 to 100 kids for story time or a summer reading event for people of all ages. It allows a place for all four of the elementary schools or community daycares to come and have a puppet show, be introduced to the library, and get their library cards. A meeting space allows for authors to be welcomed into the library to give presentations on their books, or a genealogy expert to come show people how to research their family history. The private study rooms provide the opportunity for tutoring or helping people research more private information one-on-one. -on -one. The librarians are one of the greatest resources we have in Oregon. And with more space and the opportunity to use their creativity, the programming and resources they could provide would be beyond anyone's imagination. I want you all to know we're not trying to build the biggest or fanciest library. We're trying to create the best library for Oregon. To help with the building size and perspective, Jennifer is going to talk about some libraries in the surrounding communities. Thank you, Jenny. Um, so we did want to share some data on um, sizes of comparable libraries in our area that you might have um, visited or just to, to understand what kind of size we're looking for. Um, so these are the, the communities in Dane County that are closest to our population size. Um, and this is the population based on the Department of Administration 2021 population estimates. It's not census data, but it's the DOA numbers. <clears throat> so if you look at library size for Oregon, we're at just over 10,000 square feet. Um, so DeForest is the closest in population to Oregon, and their building right now is 33,000 square feet, and that building was built in 2002. So they've been using that space for almost 20 years now, and that's kind of the space that the size space that we're looking for. So 
um, what we're, we're, we're not asking for the fanciest or the biggest, but we're trying to, to be thoughtful about the spaces that we choose and, and to make sure that it's going to last for a while and serve the community's needs. Um, we had a space needs analysis um, with the architects back in 2019 that went through all the spaces and the collection size to make sure that it was kind of right size to fit our community. Um, so you can also see that even though our building is small, we're doing a lot of business. Um, so our circulation is higher than some of those libraries with, with bigger spaces, but that's just one measure of how people use libraries. So there's you know, program attendance and there's reference questions and there's computer usage and lots of different ways that people use the library. So that's only one indicator, um, but kind of gives you a sense of you know, our, our space and how it's used compared to some bigger spaces. Um, Jenny is gonna now talk about a little bit more about our timeline and our process to date. Um, so there's been questions about how we got to where we are and why the full impact of site challenges weren't known earlier. To help answer these questions, um, I created this kind of timeline that you can probably read, although the words are probably really small, so I apologize. Um, so I want to explain the work that's been done and the process that we've been following. Starting in 2009, there are library board meeting notes on discussions with the village of needing a significant addition to the library or the building of a new library, only 14 years after it opened. I've heard stories about the library being too small the day it was moved into and have been told by many community members we shouldn't repeat this mistake. Moving on in history to late 2016, the village decided to purchase the 249 North Main Street lot for a mun municipal use building. In August of 2017, it was decided to designate the Main Street site for a new library following recommendations by planning consultants. However, this approval was conditional and required that a memorandum of understanding between the village and the library be created before it became official. This MOU was done because the re relationship between the library and the village is different than other municipal groups like the Parks Commission, for example. A good portion of library funding comes from the village taxpayers and we serve the greater Oregon community, so we coordinate and work closely with the village board to operate the library. However, library boards are granted independent governing rights separate from the village in the state of Wisconsin. So creating a a strong memorandum of understanding, a contractual agreement between the boards, it was crucial to define the roles of different boards and to create specific steps and milestones of the process. Development of the MOU was started in August of 2017, shortly after the North Main Street site was selected for the library, and then completed in October of 2018. This allowed the library board to proceed to the first exciting step of hiring architect. That's when I met Wes. <laughs> in February of 2019, OPN Architects was hired, and through the listening sessions described earlier, a space plan and conceptual plan design were created for the designated site. The conceptual rendering and space plan that I'm sure you've all seen were used for fundraising purposes for the next two years. The MOU agreement stated that architectural and engineering work could not proceed until the funds necessary to pay for the estimated cost of constructing the conceptual design were raised, which meant that during the fundraising period, no additional site work, design, or engineering was performed. We focused on raising money to build the library and how best to support the community during a pandemic. In February of 2021, an amazing community-wide fundraising effort of $2 million was presented to the Village Board, who then raised their support of the library from $6 million to $10 million. With this increased funding came the mission of creating a sustainable building to support the needs of the community for now and in the future, and an understanding that there was not going to be additional money given by the Village for the project. We had to stay within our budget and build the best library possible. With the estimated conceptual design funding procured, the MOU allowed the next step of formal design to proceed. The library board hired an owner's rep, Jeff, who's here today, to assist with the design and construction process in July 2021, and then the architects and engineers started with preliminary civil engineering, site layout, and design while their contract was being finalized. During this design, the issues of poor soils, site grading, tree removal, and other concerns that have been presented on previously came into sharper focus. While some challenges were anticipated, it was only through the recent civil engineering work that sufficient information became available to fully understand the cumulative impacts on the new library project. These challenges would result in a library different than our community had envisioned. Please understand, the North Main Street site is still viable to be built on, but there's the $600,000 premium spent on the site to make it functional that's not money that's being used in the building project itself. It means things like geothermal or solar that make the building more efficient long-term would be removed, or there'd be a significant reduction in building aesthetic or furnishings to meet the budget. This would be true of any site that we have to purchase property or remediate soils, put special foundations in to build the library on. 
After presenting the issues we were facing, the guidance from both boards was to pause and look at potential other options that could better meet the needs of the library, desires of the community, and the best use of the set budget of $12 million for the library project. With this guidance, the design team has been meeting with village staff to review sites that would be a possibility for locating the library. They've looked at sites suggested by community members, village board members, and proposed some options of their own. To go through the sites, I'd like to introduce Elise Cruz, the Oregon Director of Village Planning and Zoning. Thank you. Thanks, Jenny. Um, this slide here, again, just summarizes some of the challenges and opportunities that we uh, still have with that North Main Street site. Um, moving forward and just keeping those in mind uh, with the opportunities and challenges that other sites present. Uh, I'll be going through uh, quickly all of the sites suggested. Um, the ones that have an asterisk at the end are sites that are suggested by a community or board member. Uh, we know that some of these sites are more viable than others. A lot of these sites have a um, currently occupied uh, functioning a newer building on them, um, but we wanted to be responsive and to the suggestions that we received from the community and board members and let you know that we did take a look at all of these options. Um, the other uh, point of clarification I just wanted to offer before we go through the sites, uh, I think there's been some confusion or some conversation about uh, the senior center and their planning process for their new building and that kind of being tied in with this process. Um, an evaluation and uh, of all of our village buildings and their uses and lifespans is always um, ongoing. The senior center is getting ready to embark on their own planning process, which will look probably very similar to the library listening sessions, <coughs> understanding what their current users and also future users of the library of the senior center will want to see. Um, again, that process hasn't started yet. There are plans to start that um, very soon, but that does take time. And so um, before they really know where they need to be, what they want to have um, as part of their facility, what other adjacent um, community facilities might work well with the senior center. Um, that process is separate from this process. We're tasked with um, finding the best site and creating the best project for the library. So that that is our focus. Um, and currently, the senior center preferred site is their current site on Brook Street. Um, so that has not changed, but just wanted to um, put that clarification out there. So I'm going to first go through all of the village-owned sites, um, just covering basic information, acreage, zoning, ownership, and the current designation in our um, comprehensive plan, which is our future land use designation, kind of what we see um, those sites becoming. So sometimes the zoning doesn't quite fit with what the future land use uh, shows, but that's the planning commission, the planning process. Um, works out through um, their various meetings. So first one is 249 Main, North Main Street, the library site we've been talking about the last couple of years. This is about 2.75 acres, currently zoned two family residential. Our, our comp plan shows an institutional use. So that includes library, museum, um, church, any kind of um, public gathering spaces. The current Brook Street site has also been suggested, and we took a look at this. This is 2.6 acres, as shown in the red outline, which uh, captures all of the land that's currently owned by the village. Uh, the village owns the post office, and they lease back from us uh, that space. The senior center, the library, and its parking lot, as well as the right-of-way section here off Waterman Street, which could be potentially closed off. Uh, this is in our central business zoning district, which is the same as downtown, um, and our um, comp plan shows central mixed use, so variety of uses, uh, high density in this area. Kaiser Park has been suggested. This is 5.8 acres. It's just right across the street from the current library and the pool. Um, current zoning is our kind of park use that's called rural holding conservation, um, shown as parks and open space. Um, for those that don't know, Kaiser Park was historically the village dump, and so there are people still alive today that remember taking their trash down there. Uh, it's a low lying area. The Batfish Creek is also undergrounded um, in this general area um, and quite a few environmental concerns about um, building anything here. But that was definitely a site that was suggested. Um, JC Park West is 28.3 acres. We, it's bordered by Oak Street on the west and Perry Parkway on the east. Um, this is again is shown as parks in our zoning code and future land use map. 
Um, the village board has committed four million dollars and the community uh, has been tasked with raising half a million dollars for a renovation project. Uh, we plan to at this point bid this out over the winter and have construction start here in the springtime. Bethel Green Acre Park has also been suggested. This is 6.6 .6 acres, uh, these three parcels here. This is right off of um, South Baroque Drive uh, near RCI School, um, also shown as parks. Um, most of our neighborhood parks were actually land dedicated by the developer when the um, neighborhood was platted, and those are contractually required to remain as a uh, park green space to serve that neighborhood and the community um, for um, the, you know, indefinitely. So um, that's kind of how parks are treated, uh, neighborhood parks are treated in the village. Um, 153 Alpine Parkway lot. So for those that don't know, Village Hall will be moving next spring to the former One Community Bank building at the corner of CC and Alpine. So the Methodist Church is right here um, and the food pantry as well. So kind of right across the street from that. Um, as part of that land sale from the bank, we did purchase um, both the building and this vacant lot to the south here. This is 1.7 acres, um, currently zoned as planned business. And we did do a comprehensive plan update earlier this year uh, for both these parcels to make them that institutional use since there was a change from the bank to um, Village Hall. The former school district site um, that was purchased back in 2020 from the school district to the village um, is off Alpine Parkway. It's adjacent to Keller Alpine Meadows Park here. Um, this is not an exact outline of a potential building site, just showing an approximate four acre area um, as part of this, but 180, 190 acre um, collection of um, open space right now. This is currently the parcel here is zoned single family residential and our future land use shows it as an institutional again the kind of public gathering space type use. The current village hall site has also been suggested. Uh, this is a very strangely shaped parcel uh, but it captures the alley behind all the businesses on South Main Street or on North Main Street I guess. Uh, the parking lot, Triangle Park as well as Village Hall, uh, current village hall. This is 1.2 acres in size and has that downtown central business zoning and central mixed use um, for the future land use map. The dog park has been suggested over on Park Street uh, near the hockey rink, high school, and um, police station over here. This is shown again as a park use. Um, the important thing here to note is this has a sort of what we call an overlay district of an environmental corridor. Uh, the dog park is actually in a designated, um, or sorry, a delineated wetland, so it's been mapped, and um, this is an area that will not be allowed to be built on in the future. Um, if you've seen some of the construction going on, the end of Wolf Street and Janesville Street, that's the Lake Stone workforce housing um, development that's going up pretty quickly here. Uh, more than half of their site is also in a delineated wetland, and so that's not being touched as well. So that's similar to how this land is treated here. The dog park needs to remain open space and, and passive use. The fire station has been um, suggested as well. Again, we realize that there are currently, um, this is currently being used and the fire department at this time isn't looking to relocate. This is just a suggestion that we received. This is a half acre site uh, in our downtown area. Um, similar with the, um, to the last slide, the police station is also a fairly new building being used. This was another just suggestion we heard from the community. So 1.4 acres. Um, and an institutional zoning district and future land use. The former Ticey building at uh, 281 West Netherwood Street, uh, right along the railroad. Here's Netherwood, here is um, Burr Oak, right here, <laughs> um, and Market Street. This is a 2.9 acre uh, triangular parcel. Um, we're happy to share if you haven't heard already <laughs> that this building has been purchased um, earlier this summer by JT Engineering, um, a civil engineering firm. They're based in Madison right now. They're gonna be relocating their headquarters to Oregon. Um, they are also the industrial, more um, high bay, garage bay um, open space in the back is going to be leased to Icon Robotics, which is a New Zealand uh, robotics company. And they're gonna be 
um, sort of starting their U.S. operations with um, boots on the ground here in Oregon. So we're excited to welcome them to the community. This is shown as planned industrial zoning and a planned mixed use, um, which is similar to the downtown mixed use. It's a little bit more of a suburban type, a uh, little bit less dense um, development that's envisioned in that category. Uh, the lease family site has also been suggested. This is 650 East Netherwood. So um, the Catholic Church is right here. Walgreens is right here. Uh, there is actually two parcels that make up this area. It's uh, exactly four acres. Currently shown as single family residential. And there was a comprehensive plan update uh, this June that changed this um, from more of a neighborhood use to that planned mixed use um, envisioned for this area. The 56ers building has also been suggested. This is on the far north end of town, uh, Braun Road here, Market Street, and here's North Main Street. 2.8 acres in size, owned by the 56ers, currently being used for their training facility. Uh, it's in our industrial zoning, general industrial zoning district, and that is what is envisioned um, in the future. The Dan Brittler site, uh, formerly the site that was looked at by the Great Dane for their brewing operations. Um, is 1.8 acres. This probably looks familiar. This is the new village hall and our um, 153 Alpine Parkway site. So kind of kitty corner from that site. Um, currently owned by Dan Bertler, shown as planned business zoning and uh, neighborhood business type use in the future. The Faith Lutheran site on Washington Street and Elm, uh, just south of downtown, is a 0 0.8 acre site. Um, shown as institutional, again, that includes churches and, and public buildings, and um, that is what is envisioned here in the future as well. Uh, the Lakestone project that I was just mentioning, uh, part of their project was to carve out a 2.7 acre parcel um, on the south end of the site. So this is right across from the Quick Trip here on Janesville Street. Um, shown as planned business, and um, that's what's intended in the future as well. The Seville building, uh, this is also currently being used and there are plans to develop this uh, western side of the parcel, but this is off of Braun Road here, right along the railroad and Market Street uh, is on the east side here. This is a 6.7 acre parcel all told, um, again in those industrial zoning districts. And those are the sites. So uh, the listening sessions were really important to the, the Village Board especially. Um, so we this is the third in the series of um, three listening sessions that we hosted. There's also an online comment form. So if you know anybody or you know don't feel like making comments today and want to think about anything presented, you can use that online comment form. And again, we do have a handout with that address. If you want to pick one up on your way out, it's also on the library website. Um, so the com community feedback that we get, both what you say and what you write, um, will be shared with both the library board and village board. So um, they will see all your comments um, that are submitted by either your writing on your form today or our online comment form, and they all will either have attended the listening sessions or will receive the, the link to the recording so that they can listen to them um, if they weren't able to join us today. Um, so we also have a joint meeting that will have the library boards and the village board meet together to kind of talk about the, the feedback and what's next and what information is needed to kind of get to a place where they can make the best possible decision for our community. Um, so, so watch for that coming up in, in the future. Um, so we are going to now take just a short break. So uh, my, my coworkers, uh, Laura and Alicia, have a form they're going to pass out. And we ask that if you'd like, if you have a question about the presentation, if you could write it down, we'll be taking questions from the form. Also, if you'd like a turn to speak today, there's a spot to mark a box to say you want to speak in front of the group today. We'll invite people up for a turn at the microphone to share their comments for three minutes. Or if you, if you don't want to speak in front of the group but have comments you want to share in writing, you can write them on that form um, and turn it in. So we're going to take a, a quick, well, we'll give you about 10 minutes just so that people have time to write their comments and questions. When you're done, you can um, give your form back to one of those two ladies or put it, they have a basket as well if you want to throw it in the, the green bin. Um, and then we'll, make, we'll convene again in 10 minutes and make sure that your questions are answered and that anybody who wants to speak gets a turn, okay? We'll come back at about 10, 10, 10. <laughs> So if anybody around
had to leave. So Steve, I'm going to invite you to come up and do your speaking. We're going to then proceed with questions, and then we'll go back as originally planned with public comment at the end. So we're just going to let this community member speak because they do need to leave. So again, we'll give everybody three minutes. Hey, Jennifer. Can you have them all give their name and address and everything before they yep, speak? Yep, yep. So when, when, um, when I apologize, because we're, we're just having this a little bit out of order. So when you come up to speak, we'll have you give your name, your full name and your address, just so we know who's talking um, before you speak. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, and I appreciate the courtesy um, allowing me to speak uh, because I have another engagement. Um, I'm here to support uh, citing the new library at Alpine Keller. You have the uh, opportunity to do something transformational here. And I want to share with you my experience in, in somewhat of a similar situation when I was on the school board. Uh, about four years ago, we had to select a site for the new elementary school in Fitchburg, and we had several sites that were available to us, three particular primary ones. Two of them would have been okay sites for a school district, would have, would have made a nice elementary school building. The site we chose where Forest Edges and the Terravesa development uh, was the one we took because for us that was going to be transformational in terms of what a school would look like for generations. Um, it was adjacent to a City of Fitchburg Conservancy portion and we had also been approached by a family that was interested in donating uh, a, a old stand forest for a school forest and so we took that opportunity to site, to purchase that land and to site the school there because it afforded us uh, an opportunity to build a unique building and one that tied in with the land and tied in with our efforts at sustainability and conservation efforts. And so we worked with our architect to develop a building that fit in with the space and enhance the conservation and sustainability aspects that we want. So if you look at that school on the hill, as it's called in that area, it sites in well in sort of kind of that prairie style look overlooking the area. Um, we were able to, because of that site, make it a net zero building. So we were able to incorporate solar and geothermal into that building. And more excitingly, we built a space to enhance the environment and to, to build in aspects of the environment. And uniquely enough, our library in that building uh, is cantilevered out over the building so that it overlooks our old school forest now and we've cleared a prairie uh, in the back so that when you are in that library you look into nature which enhances the theme of the park or the, of the building to us that's that's different than any other building we could have built on any other site this is what alpine keller offers you okay it offers you the opportunity to build a building that is building into the nature. And so um, I, I do work around the county, and so what I've given you are some pictures of Wanakee and Verona and Sun Prairie. All three of those libraries, I think, are transformational in their community. They were built, all of them were built in nature areas along bike paths, across from conservancy areas or in conservancy areas. And if you look at the way they've designed those buildings, they embrace mm -hmm. those nature, th those aspects of the nature. That's what Alpine Keller gives you. Okay, I think Alpine Keller gives you the opportunity to work with the natural nature alliance and those groups to enhance uh, Alpine Keller and Lerner Parks. There, it's on the bike path. There's going to be uh, needed some. Um, facilities there, bathroom or water, et cetera, in there, you're, you're going to have to do that. It's part of your plan, okay? You can incorporate that into the building, the new library building. You can incorporate aspects to utilize um, that nature area, just like uh, Wanda Key did. Um, they've got a special building or a room that's dedicated for the public 
that uh, is separate from the library that can be used for that purpose. So I, I think Alpine Keller gives you an opportunity to be really transformational. Um, from a, one more point I want to make, and I'll step back. Um, the park plan, the long-range park plan um, for Alpine Keller, and I've included those portions in the back of the packet, includes recreational fields in that area. I don't think that's suitable. I think it's counterproductive to uh, the use of that whole space as conservancy. I don't think the topography fits with it. I would suggest to the village board members that are here that the school district has uh, suggested and, and, and provided the village board with another option where those could be cited. That's in the Donaldson property that is north of the cemetery. It's a much better spot. We've given you a conceptual plans of that. So I, th I think if you're going to cite the library at Alpine Keller, you can also look at maybe moving those recreational fields and work with the district and putting them in other sites. So thank, thank you, Steve. Thank you for, for your time. Um, I, I hope you cited at Alpine Keller because I want to tell you uh, when we saw the completed project uh, at Forest Edge and how we were able to build that into nature and build a unique building that's going to be there for centuries. We had a lot of pride in that, and I think the community does. Thank, Thank you for you. your time. We're going to um, move back to questions, um, and then we'll go back to all the other community members who want to speak. So we'll try to field your questions the best that we can. So I'll read the question out loud for everyone to hear, um, and then our panel will respond the best that we can. The person who's most suited to respond, or maybe more than one person, will respond to the site. So um, the first question is, which of the presented sites are the most viable for the library, and which sites line up best with the vision the board and community have for Oregon and its future? Um, I'm going to start with the second part of that. I think it's really up to the village board um, to decide which sites they feel um, lines up best with their vision and Oregon's vision. So that's a decision for them, um, not, not our staff members up here today. Um, but in terms of the presented sites, again, we talked about needing a four acre parcel. We're trying to position the library the best both for the future needs and for the long term of the community um, so that we're not back in a position um, down the road where we, we need more space and don't have anywhere to grow. Um, and so that's why we were really aiming for that four acre um, goal. So any of the sites that are closest to that and wouldn't require additional um, funding just to, to build um, do site, site work to prepare would be the best choices. So we had been focusing mostly on the, the former school site, the current library location, and the North Main Street site because those are some of the larger um, sites that are not existing park or other municipal uses. Um, Jeff or Elise, do you guys have anything to add to that? Um, just that there are some privately owned sites that could be viable, but again, the potential um, cost to acquire that site would be something to take into consideration too is that would be part of the project cost and we do have a fixed budget to um, carry out the project okay so the next one jeff i'm gonna have you respond to um this uh, question is the original version or vision called for a four acre lot a number of the suggested sites are under two acres such as the village hall some of the alpine parkway sites are these even viable what would you say is the minimum acreage needed to accommodate a 33,000 square foot building? Do you want this to read? That's fine. Um, well, that's where we came around to the four acre number. And, you know, the, we, we, did, we did as much as we could with the North Main Street site to try to figure out how to make things work on less acreage. And you, you know where we ended up with that. So going forward, um, we really need to find a piece of property that fits the building, all of the uses, and future expansion. So it would be four acres plus, I guess, would be the short answer. So the next question is, why was there no mention of the civic master plan or the comprehensive plan in the planning timeline? Um, and part of the reason is we were trying to um, put a whole complicated long process down to a 20 minute presentation. So that's, that's part of the answer. But um, the, the North Main Street site was selected as part of the, the Civic Campus Plan. So in the Civic Campus Plan, the updated version, it did recommend that site um, as part of the Civic 
campus master plan. So that, that was part of the timeline and that's kind of how we got to the site that we started with on North Main Street. Um, and then because of you know what Jenny mentioned with the site challenges, that's why we decided to pause and see if that's still the best, most viable location or if, if the boards wanted to pivot and explore other options. So that was um, basically where we got to where we are today was by following that civic campus master plan originally. Um, and why you see you know, all the different sites um, being considered that are on that list. Um, why is the library committee not talking to the senior center? Um, so right now the senior center is on a, a slightly different timeline, but we have been um, communicating with the senior center about their needs and their process. Um, so they are, again, like Elise mentioned during the presentation, just getting started with, with their future needs. Um, they are planning on expanding and growing, and, and part of the Civic Campus Master Plan, they were planning on expanding and possibly combining with private housing on the current library location. So the concept had been that when, when the library moves out, that would free up the current library senior center block for the senior center to expand. They want to be all one story. Um, so that would free up that for them to expand on one floor um, in that current location. Um, and so that was had been their plan until uh, we kind of got to where we are. And so that's kind of causing you know us to pause, which may affect their plans, but that had been their preference. Do you want to add anything to that? Um, no, just again, that, that the current site has always been envisioned just with the proximity to some of the um, the lower income senior housing and um, other services that seniors need um, to remain in that location. I know the senior center has been, um, you know, senior affordable housing and co-locating with um, the senior center has been always a, a possibility that the senior center has been interested in exploring. It would also help potentially if there was a public private partnership with funding the construction of the senior center. Um, there are other community uses such as potentially a preschool um, that would love to co-locate with the senior center and part of that needs uh, assessment and listening um, sessions that they need to do would determine if that's viable. Um, there's also been discussion about potentially doing some kind of community recreation space that would not be connected with the school district but would be village controlled and potentially be able to house some of the senior center's active uses like their Zumba classes and line dancing and things but also be available to the community. So. Um, without them having gone through their process and really understanding the different facilities that they would like to have nearby uh, the senior center. Um, they don't really know, again, how much space they need um, to have a viable site as well. So I think, um, you know, we need to make sure as a village that we're not um, discounting the future um, opportunities that the senior center could have and the viability of that project um, by trying to attach it to a project that's a little at a little bit of a different stage so if that was something that the community decided to move forward with and um, trying to create one large facility or um, you know collection of facilities I think um, pausing and allowing the senior center to catch up to where the library is in that process would be something the village board would definitely need to consider um, so the next question is how is downtown currently defined in the village um, at least, is there an official village definition <laughs> of downtown? I guess yeah, it probably depends on who you ask. We do have our central business um, zoning district, which is the majority of downtown and the blocks um, where Village Hall, the library, the senior center, the pool um, are right now, kind of that area. But that's um, essentially how it's defined. We also have our historic downtown kind of overlay where our historic preservation commission reviews projects. Okay. So that's mostly actually the South Main Street block and the Netherwood building. Um, the next question is how important is having the library downtown? Um, and I think that really depends again on who you ask and it's the vision of you know, the community members and, and what they perceive as the importance to that and what, what their perspectives are. So I'm not gonna answer that on behalf of the boards because um, I'll leave that up to them to answer. Um, I, I guess I'd like to add to something that? just to that. Um, so the last listening session for those that um, were not here, one of the speakers came up and shared an article from the American Planning Association and what their recommendation was for library siting. And she admitted it's an old article. I've read it myself several times because I was curious, what does the professional organization that um, guides urban planners say about libraries? Uh, that study is from the 1960s and um, I would just caution any other, uh, you know, the urban planning at the time in the 1960s wasn't exactly <laughs> what we think of today and, and a lot of things were recommended that we don't follow now, like urban renewal and redlining of neighborhoods and things like that. Um, current thought, not necessarily in terms of libraries, but in terms of downtown and viability of um, 
downtown areas and small towns is that the best thing we can do to support local businesses and create lots of activity is to have density of housing near downtown. So um, from at least a planning perspective, what I would be recommending if we're really looking at, we wanna support activity downtown and supporting our businesses and create a walkable um, you know, community that's easy to get around and provides a lot of um, accessible services to people. Um, we would be prioritizing housing downtown rather than um, municipal buildings. Not to say that they don't both work hand in hand and obviously if there's a way to um, co-locate those things together, that's often good, but we're also working in a finite amount of space and um, the problems that Oregon's seeing, we're kind of experiencing right now, we have very limited viable large sites to build on. And that's actually a good problem because we're a growing community, there's a lot of businesses and people that wanna live here. We have a great school district. Um, and so we're kind of caught in this space where we're growing, we wanna accommodate a building for a library and a site that's gonna allow them to grow into the next 100 years. Um, but Oregon's changed so much in the last 100 years. So trying to forecast that out and make sure we give um, the library the flexibility to accommodate um, that growth in the community and don't end up in a spot where we are now where 30 years later, we've outgrown our library. Thank you, Elise. Um, the next question is, if parking would be removed on the proposed Main Street site, or reduce, reduced, I'm sorry, would that, that alleviate some of the site challenges? Um, Jeff, do you mind responding to that one? Well, um, and we're talking about the current <coughs> North Main Street the, site? The, the North Main Street site um, that we was previously could, proposed. Yeah, we could eliminate parking we could eliminate part of the building um, but regardless of what uh, the requirements are from the village for parking there's also the requirements that the building the way that it's designed and planned um, there's requirements that the building needs to have parking so we've landed on now basically the same number when the village changed their uh, ordinance and that's around 100 stalls are required to be able to serve the building the way that it's planned now and uh, wherever we go we would hope to have that much parking the next question is now that the new library information and listening sessions are coming to an end can you share what the response has been from residents do those responses favor one site over the other um, so i'm going to pause there so um the results of the listening sessions um, will be kind of compiled and given to the village board and library boards. So those will be available as part of the village board packet. Um, the links to all the listening sessions, um, thanks to OCA Media, will be available on the library's website. So you can go through and listen to any of the public comments. Um, so that will try to be really transparent with, um, we also have notes on the comments, uh, notes to the best of our ability on the comments that um, people make kind of summarized as well. So if you want to read through those instead of watching, um, those will be available. Um, we have not compiled those to see um, if exact numbers on any one site. Um, the, the helpful thing about comments is there's a whole, whole lot more in the comments than just necessarily a site preference. And so some people, some people share reasons about why they like things or considerations. And so there's a lot more than just, just preferences about a site that are kind of wrapped into those. And so those are really valuable for the village board to hear um, as they work with the library board to make a decision. Um, it says, how much weight will those responses have in the decision as to which site is chosen? Um, if it is advisory, how heavily skewed would it need to be before that is the main factor in site selection? Um, and I'm afraid that I can't answer that. The, the folks answering questions today are, well, besides Jenny, are all staff. And so those, those decisions will really be up to the library board and the village board as they work together to weigh um, the considerations about the sites, the costs, the space needs, the future vision for the library, for the community. Um, the community feedback, and so there's a whole lot of factors that go into that decision, and so that'll be up to them as they work through that, um, how to weigh and how to work through those. Um, Jenny, I don't know if you want to add anything to that, um, but that'll be up to the library board um, and village boards to decide. Um, next question is, could you please list the pros and cons of the three sites being currently considered? The community cannot make decisions without having this information. Um, so what this question is referring to is um, prior to the listening sessions, the library board was kind of focusing on three sites that um, seemed most suitable at that time, which were the North Main Street site, uh, the current library site on Brook Street with the senior center post office properties that are all owned by the village, and then the former school site on Alpine. So we were kind of honing in on those and um, at the library board, 
um, in October. That video is that um, that presentation is also available on OCA Media site. So if you're interested in, in seeing that full presentation, um, let Laura or Alicia know, and I can make sure that you get the link to that. Um, we did um, look at pros and cons and challenges and opportunities of, of each of those sites in more more detail um, because there's some costs. Um, associated with certain sites, there's unique, each, each location has unique um, opportunities and challenges. Um, so I don't think, I don't know if we're gonna go into those today. Uh, I don't know if you wanna, do you think we should highlight any of those? Um, no, and there may, be, there may be a couple more sites now that we focus on, but next steps would be that we will get into that detail when we can kind of narrow down after this process of which ones we need to focus on and give you that, that data so everybody's got the information to make a decision. Yeah, and those, the, what, the sites that are focused on, like the next steps when we talk to the village board, we'll see what, what they want to do, what's next, what information they want, and they, they might want to focus on certain sites that might be different than we were thinking before, and so <laughs> we want to get that direction so that we, we know what work to do and we can spend time working on the sites that they, they most closely want to look at. Um, but of course, you know, factors like size and uh, cost and timeline and all those things will, I'm sure, be part of their conversation and, and the information that they, they want to gather. Um, but again, yeah, if you want to see that previous presentation um, that kind of started doing that with those three sites um, previously identified, we can do that. But again, those might be very different sites, so we'll see. Can you demonstrate the factors other than circulation that demonstrate usage? Um, so there's, there's a lot of different factors that we do an annual report every year that um, talks about the different statistics that we report to the Department of Public Instruction. So um, like program attendance at library programs, um, number of programs we have, um, number of visitors through our building, so people might visit the library but not check anything out, um, number of computer uses. Um, we have, uh, let me see if I can pull up some of those numbers for you really quickly here. So like um, just a few, a few numbers. I can get my computer to work properly. So, for example, in 2019, we had about 120,000 library visits. So that's that's one number. And some of those people checked out books, but some did not. Um, we also that same year had um, two, over 240,000 items checked out. Um, we had. Um, 35,000 borrows of ebooks and audiobooks online. We had 576 programs and classes. Um, we had over 20,000 participants in library programs. So those are just some of the different numbers. There's a lot more statistics that we're required to track every year, but those are just some of the different ways. And so some people use the library in, in multiple ways. Some people only come in and read the newspaper, and we don't really count that in any of those numbers. Um, some people come just for programs. Some people come for every single different use. Um, so that's the great thing about it is people can come and use it for whatever whatever needs they have, uh, as many needs they have or as few needs they have whenever they need to, um, which is great. Um, the next question is, it seems important to keep the library accessible to schools and daycares within a walkable distance. Is there data sub to substantiate this idea? Um, so the Oregon School District has a number of schools and right now the current library site is near two of the elementary schools, um, but there's also a number of schools that we're, we're not close to. Um, so I don't have any specific data or research on that available right now, um, but you know, kind of wherever we go, we'll be probably closer to some of those schools and farther from other schools. Um, one of the solutions the Youth Center has used is implemented busing so that all students can get to the Youth Center um, using busing to make sure they have easy access regardless of what school they, they go to and where they live, so that would be something we could potentially look into. Um, but I think regardless of where the library cited, whether it's the current site or somewhere different, um, that, that that's something that we need to continue to have dialogue about to make sure that we are being accessible to students that whose schools aren't close, whether it, it be those elementary schools or different schools. So if we're closer to RCI, we might be further from the high school. Um, and so just kind of thinking about that and how we can work with schools. We have a lot of partnerships with the schools um, to serve all ages out in the community. We work at the youth center, we work at the senior center to try to get out in the community where people are at even if they're not coming into the library and we plan to continue to do those and try to improve those regardless of where the library is located. Um, yeah, I would just add um, with regard to daycare, I think it's important to remember that our daycares are also spread across the community geographically. So um, there are daycares on 
um, North Main Street that might be closer to the Lease family site. There are daycares in the Oregon Parks neighborhood and near the Methodist Church that might be closer to the school site. Um, so the accessibility of those daycares, again, would depend on which site um, are, is honed in on. So I think we've gotten through questions. If I missed your question, can you raise your hand? I think we got everybody's. Um, so we're gonna go on to public comment now. Um, so I'm gonna call anybody who indicated they'd like a chance to speak. I'm just gonna call your name and invite you up for one three minute turn. Um, I prefer not to cut people off, so I'll kind of gesture to you when you've gotten to three minutes, so you kind of know it's time to wrap up. Um, but if, if, if <coughs> it takes a little while to wrap up, I might politely ask you, you know, let you know that your time is up. Um, so I'm gonna try to start with people who have not commented at previous listening sessions just to make sure they all get a chance first. Um, I apologize, I had an organization system and today the technical difficulties just threw me. So we're gonna start Sorry, with yeah. Philip Taylor mm -hmm. first. Philip, would you like to come forward? Okay, so my name's Philip Taylor. Uh, 151 Kirstead Lane here in the village. Um, thank you for the opportunity to speak. I mean, I'm not a, a big library user myself, but I am a, a big component of town planning and, and thinking about how urban development is done. Um, yeah, there is a comprehensive plan. There is a civic master plan. And within those, there are some key uh, statements within the comprehensive plan under number item 10, the library. The library plays a critical part in the con enhancing the success and the image of the village downtown. Uh, in the civic master plan, there has been previous public outreach surveys done and top priority is maintain the village of Oregon civic, social and cultural presence in downtown. You know, this is what good town downtowns are. They're a lively place, they're a centre where, where people are, uh, gather and, and create a focus for the whole of the development of the village. Moving things out of downtown would be like putting Walmart out on the north end of town. It's not going to help anything. It, it, it may be convenient. Um, Steve talked about, uh, you know, visual, transformational. I find it ironic that you would move a building onto green space and call it transformational. I'd rather see Alpine Parkway or any green space, especially Alpine Parkway area, uh, restored the green, original pre-development green space, put in as prairie, put in as oaks and, and trees, create public walkways and, and nature, and just expand that whole park into a nature experience. 20 years from now, people are going to think that is tremendous vision. That is transformational. If you take the library and put it out there, 20 years time, you're going to say it's not big enough. We'll have to build it somewhere else. This is always going to happen. There's four acres, four and a half acres right next door here. The plans all say that's where you should be. That's the vision. And certainly talking to, and I'm sorry, my time's on my stuff, talking to the senior senior, I think you should stop pause and go, look, the senior center needs redevelopment, the library needs redevelopment, that land, eventually all those other businesses will redevelop and you may have the opportunity to buy additional land there and expand, but certainly uh, pausing now and putting the senior center together, putting the library together and going, we really got to think about downtown and the vision of the village as a village, not as individual buildings that you're going to move around the place. So my recommendation is just pause look at economies of scale. It might cost a little more, it might delay things a little longer, but from a point of view of, of town planning, you've got the site there already, you're not destroying any green space, you've got the opportunity to build a green building to do work on that, you might have to go down underground for parking, solar panels on top, you can do all sorts with that, and you can be transformational in the redevelopment of what is basically are really not that nice a site, right? You can't say that that is visionary. You, know, you can put visionary there. Don't go outside that and just keep the vision of downtown as downtown, as a center focus for the whole city. 
this, this whole village is going to blow out to the northwest. It's going to become part of Fitchburg. They have a central park area there, and a central library here, keeping downtown. The businesses will thank you. You know, this is what you don't want to pull things apart. You want to pull them together. Mixed use, that's what I'll say. Thank you. Thank you, Philip. Next person I'd like to invite forward is Justine Bondi. <coughs> Um, my name is Justine Bondi. I am at 246 Market Street. Um, first off, I want to just thank you for having so many community input meetings throughout these years. Um, I can remember the you know first ones we had, in, well, not, well, the first ones for this project. And you were getting input on what we wanted the library to be on the inside and on the outside. And it was pretty much a consensus that we wanted that park-like setting with all the natural landscape and lots of outdoor areas for learning and for community space. <laughs> And I do think that the Keller Alpine um, Park location aligns with all of that perfectly. Um, the um, our conceptual designs that we got from OPN also highlighted that, that park landscape or park setting. <laughs> um, I love the idea of incorporating a nature center in with the library. And kind of like what Steve was saying, I think it would do a great job of preserving and highlighting the park. Um, I also, you know, I, th I think there's been some word about possibly moving it a little north onto those cornfields maybe on the, along Alpine, and I think that would be maybe a good consideration to move it a little bit further away from the wetlands. And lastly, I would like to ask that the site at 249 North Main be more removed from consideration for this. Um, it would have been great to have the library there, but it's just gonna take such a toll on that land and the surrounding neighborhoods. I just don't see it being good there, especially for future. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next person on the list is Joe Tenty. Hi, I'm Joe Tenty, 294 North Main Street. And I want to thank you too for the listening sessions. Um, I grew up just west of Denver, Colorado, in a city whose downtown was long de dead by the time I arrived. <clears throat> a city with a beautiful view and no central gathering place, just unplanned sprawl. Unlike that city, we have not lost our downtown. Historical photos show the vibrant gathering place, the heart of the village. Downtown was where everything happened. And that downtown is one of the things that drew me to Oregon 28 years ago. I hope that we can honor that legacy and not abandon to the sprawl. Unlike others, I don't believe, or like others, I don't believe that we can talk about the library alone. You need a bigger vision. I urge you to creatively think creatively about the current library site and the possibility of mixed use buildings, some combination of library, senior center, historical society, rental space, affordable apartments. I hope also that we can promote a stronger connection to the land and develop an overall conservation plan for the village. In an earlier listening session, Teresa Nelson talked about the important values of Keller Alpine Meadows. And I'd like to add two more. Natural space recreation, opportunities for walking, wildlife watching, fishing, bicycling, cross country skiing, snowshoeing are right outside our back door. More and more studies show that being outside in nature space, natural space is good for our physical and mental health. The second is a sense of place. In my hometown, amid the sprawl, the gas stations and the townhouses, there's a 200 acre natural area, a place where people come to recreate and feel a connection to the land. It has been decades in the making, and it's been amazing to watch it evolve and be utilized and well-loved. It was prime development space with an amazing view of the Rockies. But somewhere in the early 1970s, someone had a vision, and I'm so grateful. When I go there, I can walk into the past. I can see the land with its gorgeous view of the Rockies, much as my grandparents saw it and I feel a sense of place, a sense of belonging. I can also envision future generations enjoying and loving this place and strengthening their connection to the land. Aldo Leopold wrote, a thing is right when it tends to preserve the integrity, stability, and beauty of a biotic community. It is wrong when it tends otherwise. We're facing some devastating environmental issues, a changing climate, degraded water quality, and habitat loss. Bold action is needed on all levels to face these challenges. 
We claim to be concerned about the environment, and at the same time, we chip away at our natural spaces. A little here, a little there. Just a library, just a few soccer fields. Former Senator Gaylord Nelson said, the ultimate test of man's conscience may be his willingness to sacrifice something today for future generations whose words of thanks will not be heard. I hope that we listen to our conscience and preserve our natural spaces for ourselves and also for gen future generations. Thank you. Thank you. Karen Davidson. Hi, I'm Karen Davidson. I live at 770 Scott Street in Oregon. And I also wanted to thank you for holding these library listening sessions so we can um, have the opportunity to share our thoughts. Um, and I also thank you for the informational presentation. That was really informative. I also think it's important for us to think about what our vision is for our community. Um, during the process of discovering the library can't be built on the main street location without additional costs. There has been more discussion of building at the Keller Alpine Meadows location. However, there are solid reasons not to when carefully considering social and ecological factors. In two the 2018, the village developed the Civic Campus Master Plan and sought community input during the process. The plan outlines many options to house the library and senior facilities at or near their present locations and clearly shows community preference for keeping civic services downtown. In talking to people now in 2021, there seems to still be a strong preference for keeping them downtown. In order to have a walkable and bikeable community, one where it is easy to get around without a car, it makes sense to have a variety of services and businesses downtown, including the library. In order to keep the library as, as accessible to as many people as possible in the village, including the school children, seniors, and youth visiting the youth center, it also makes sense to keep it downtown. I think it's important to incorporate the Civic Campus Master Plan and to think creatively about the area around our current library and about the possibility of mixed use buildings like Joe was pointing out as well. Um, maybe incorporating the library senior center affordable apartments, mixed-use buildings. Also, there are likely to be water or soil issues in many areas around town. I think it would make sense for any site that we're looking at to um, plan for and build in money for that. Um, and I support, uh, like Philip was saying, I support pausing and maybe waiting for the senior center to catch up with their planning so that we can make a more comprehensive plan. And I would also support additional fundraising for the library in order to um, take care of those additional costs that any soil, for any soil issues that might come up or any other issues that are similar. Then in regard to ecological considerations, the Keller Alpine Meadows area contains wetlands and wetland soils contain some of the highest stores of soil carbon in the biosphere. If these are disturbed, more carbon would be released into the atmosphere. In addition, even without, even without climate change to consider, construction in that area would mean a loss of land for wildlife, degrading the wetlands, increasing noise and traffic. In addition, wetlands are a natural filtration system that contribute to water quality. That area is also a special place within the village for people to connect with nature, and it could be um, used, utilized um, more as an educational and public use space that promotes community and connection to nature, similar to, way, similar to the way Anderson Farm County Park has developed into something like that. I hope you'll consider preserving the Keller Alpine Meadows area as a natural area and reconsider having, keeping the buildings downtown, the library downtown, and once the site or sites are being more seriously considered, I would love to see a few more informational sessions held to present the merits and challenges of the site or sites and to solicit further community input for a building that will be a vital part of our community for the next few decades. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Sarah Dewey, would you like to come forward? Hi, I'm Sarah Dewey. I live at 266 North Main Street, right across from the <clears throat> site on North Main. 
Thank you for the li listening sessions and for the presentation earlier. Um, so I'm not sure where the ideal site for the library would be. However, what I can tell you is for the last at least 15 years, <coughs> the neighborhood around the, cur the 249 North Main Street, um, the neighborhood folks have been very involved in a number of proposed developments for that property. And I can't speak for everybody else, but I'm exhausted. Um, with each of those, for different reasons, they didn't come to frui fruition. Um, and in some of the cases, it was because Ultimately, after designing was proposed, the architectural plans were done, um, and it had moved along in the process, it became apparent that those plans were too big for that site. And it seems like with every one of these proposed plans or developments, the process has been backwards. We have brought up traffic flow. We have brought up the problem of flooding in the surrounding neighborhood homes around that site. Um, we have brought up problems with the parking and pavement to the property with these other developments. We've brought up the um, size of the projects. And it feels like in the front end of discussions were dismissed and were not heard. And it kind of feels the same way with this. So what I can tell you is the 249 North Main Street is not the place for, this, for the library as it's designed and proposed at this point. It's too big. You're eliminating not only the green space on that site, the historic trees, you're also going to, per the um, the analysis, my understanding is, take trees down on surrounding properties. So every time we've brought up the traffic and the water and the flooding, we've been told, oh, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. It'll be okay, we've, we've got it figured out. But there's never been any studies on the traffic. I live right there and I can tell you, the traffic, when school is going to start, when kids are being picked up and after school program. The traffic is backed up there. I've waited 10 minutes to try and get out of my driveway at those times. And to throw in an entrance and or exit to the library at that site with the traffic, it's, I don't understand why these things aren't considered at the front end so that we get all the way to you know, it's two years into this, and now it's like, oh, guess what? This site really isn't appropriate for this plan. So you start all over again. So anyway, that's my, my take on it. I, I really think that you have a number of viable sites to look at, and 249 North Main Street just really isn't, isn't it. Um, and I would hope that, um, everybody takes a step back and looks at this, at least what looks to me like a more logical um, sequence of events, find out all that information, do the research on the front end about traffic, about how it's gonna affect the um, property that's being considered with the pavement, the water flow, the drainage, all of those things before you design the building, before you design where it's going to go on that property. Make sure it's an appropriate property. Thank you, um, Sarah. And then lastly, just one other thing. Way before this all started, and there was discussion about the library and the senior center. Again, part of the group around the 249 site had talked about the library and the senior center getting together and talking about what if they had a combined building of some sort, what common areas that they both utilize at this point, you've got it in the senior center, you've got it in the library. If you combine those two buildings, where can you eliminate 
another set of bathrooms, more community rooms, where you don't have duplicate, but you have shared. Right, sounds okay. fair. Thank you so much. Thank you. Andy Wieland? My name is Andy Weiland. I live at uh, 763 Ridgeview in Oregon. Um, here today to talk about two main things. One I feel extremely uh, passionate about and important about, which is uh, the sustainability components of the new school. Um, I was involved in building the new Forest Edge Elementary School. Um, feel very imp that it's very important to both uh, from an operational point of view as well as from a educational point of view to make sure that our, our young people who are going to be dealing with climate change over the next uh, their entire lives uh, understand there there are things that we can do to improve the situation that we're in and um, i guess whatever you do wherever you cite the, the location of the of the library please please don't back off of that and i'm heartened to hear that the village has kind of put that as a constraint on uh, the decision that's being made the second thing is the location, and I uh, feel less strongly about that, partially because I know there's a lot of controversy with it, or a lot of different points of view, let's say, from people that I uh, have a lot of respect for in this room that I've known in the past, as well as people that I've been listening to even this uh, today. Um, maybe there's an, another opportunity out there. Um, maybe there's a, a third choice um, that can be considered, and, and I think you need to give that some consideration. You have some constraints and you're gonna to have to work with the village board to try to figure those things out. I will tell you one story, and I, it's a perspective that perhaps people haven't thought about, so that's why I'm, I'm providing it. Um, I've worked in Lerner Park for 20 years now. Um, and one of the questions I ask when we're building the trails out there every year with the eighth graders is, who's been to this park before? And unfortunately, it's only about maybe <laughs> one out of 10 uh, maybe even one out of 20 kids that will raise their hand. And so I, I do appreciate these areas, these natural areas, these areas, um, but I do think we have to figure out intentionally how do we get kids um, to, uh, to, to appreciate them, to know that they exist, um, that type of thing, so that they can appreciate the purposes that they serve. And there's a, a thinking that I've, I've, I've been considering that perhaps providing uh, another avenue into uh, at Keller Alpine Park would, would be that, a library would provide that type of an opportunity for students to uh, be at the site, uh, to be introduced to the site, and as some speakers have talked about, to uh, maybe get an education about what the site provides. So um, that's, that's a tough one. Um, I too want to thank you for the amount of time and effort that you put into this, the amount of uh, the intentionalness, the, uh, the transparency that you've done, uh, but perhaps another viewpoint to consider. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Brent Teske, would you like to come up? Hi, my name is Brent Teske. I live at 126 Johnson Street. I'd like to thank everyone for coming out and holding all of these sessions. I know it's a lot of time out of all of your busy schedules, but we do really appreciate it. I'd like to start by talking about the question that somebody asked earlier about whether reducing parking on the site could help mitigate a lot of the problems that we have at 249. The short answer is yes. In fact, our ordinance has clauses built into it so we can use shared use parking spaces to reduce the amount of parking on the 249 site. That makes it much more walkable, that keeps it downtown. So if we're trying to keep everything downtown, I think it's important to recognize that we should be clear about the problems at 249 North Main. When we say the site doesn't have good flow, what we're really saying is cars don't go through it very well. When we say the library won't fit on that site, what we're really saying is the parking lot, as designed, will not fit. When we talk about that extra $600,000, roughly $400,000 of that is for the parking lot. That is soil remediation that is largely confined to the lower two-thirds of the site, if I'm not mistaken. That is cutting down all the trees both on the lot itself 
and on neighbor's property next to it that is building the fence and that is using the much more expensive stormwater management alternatives because we don't have any green space left after the parking. So we can't use bioswales, we can't use rain gardens, we can't use retention and detention facilities. All of those can be significantly reduced by moving to some of this uh, parking at Netherwood Knoll. We've already spoken with the library, the, um, the school district, and they indicated that they had some support for that. We can reduce the cost by about $400,000 for this parking lot. The parking lot itself will be roughly $500,000 to construct. With the additional $400,000, we are talking about a library parking lot that will be almost a million dollars. We can reduce that cost significantly by just using the existing ordinances and moving it across the site or across the street. If our uh, lot is costing about $9,000 per stall, that is roughly $540,000 worth of parking that is literally across Main Street. That is almost the entire additional cost of using this site. So if we are staying at 249 Main Street, I think it's important we recognize and have an honest conversation about what the constraints are. And almost none of them are actually the library itself. Almost all of them are related to the parking. If we truly believe that a $900,000 taxpayer funded parking lot is the best use that we can come up with for this library, I would argue that we have a very severe lack of imagination. Numerous members of the community have already said that they want this to be a walkable, bikeable area that is downtown. We can make that happen. If we decide that we have to have the 100 parking spots on the library lot itself, we are asking people to walk further from the Johnson Street adjacent spots than they would from the Netherwood Knoll lot. If we continue to say that we have to have that hundred or the $1 million parking lot, then I don't see how we can make it work at 249 North Main, but I do think we can make it work if we reduce that parking. So again, thank you for having all of these input meetings. I really appreciate it, and I get the impression that the rest of the community does too. So thank you very much. Thank you. Andy Horneman, would you like to come forward? Good morning, my name is Andy Herneman. I live at 375 Ash Street in the Village of Oregon. I'd like to start off by saying thank you to the members of the Village Board as well as the Library Board for taking time to sit and listen to what the community members have to say about the potential library sites. Many of you on the various boards have received a few emails from me or had conversations with me in which I shared my opinions about the potential library sites. I want to say thank you to those of you who have taken the time to respond to those emails and have continued that dialogue. I would also like to briefly restate a few of those points that were discussed. I believe it is important to keep the library in the downtown area. Other speakers have given numerous reasons as to why it is important to keep civic buildings downtown, so I will not do so at this time. The village should be an example and invest the money required to make those downtown sites viable. If the village isn't willing to invest in the downtown area, why should anyone else? I also believe that the entire village owned property along Alpine Parkway should remain undeveloped. This means no library, no municipal buildings, no housing, and no sports fields. Instead, that entire parcel should be restored into prairies and wetland areas. Furthermore, the entire roughly 200 acre area of the four parks that the village owns should be protected from future development and restored. I do not envy your position in this, in this decision making process. No matter which site you choose, there will be people unhappy with your decision. All I can ask is that you take some time to look back and reflect on what the residents of the village have said, not only during the listening sessions, but also in emails and other conversations that you have had. I ask that you use that information to guide your decision-making process. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. Next speaker, Susan Shadavy. Hi, 
I'm Susan Shedevy, 1860 County Road MM. I prepared some notes, but a lot of the things I was going to say have been said better by other people. Um, so I'll just kind of glance over what I had to say. Um, there are a lot of people who have not been speaking up because they're not comfortable with coming to public places to speak or not comfortable sending in uh, emails about their opinions. Some people on the side of the old church lot have said, if they cut down my trees, I'm going to sue the village. There's you know, been a lot of various feelings. Um, I've spoken to the director at the senior center as well as one of the workers there. And there's been a lot of discussion among the seniors, but they don't really come forward to express their opinions. And many people are saying, let's build a new library on the current library site. And I feel that the, the village should have done some feasibility study of that site before asking people to voice their opinions, because we really don't know what it would cost to build there. Uh, would it be a comparable cost to preparing the site at Main Street? I think that type of information would give people a little more um, credible choice. I think there should be more research done before the community is asked where should we build the, the library. Maybe that's a feasible site and maybe not. And I think it's great that people are bringing up the idea of shared use. There could be a lot of advantages of shared use between the senior center and the library and possibly a daycare or whatever. Um, uh, also, I want to reiterate something I've said before. Um, there's almost 200 acres of parkland between, uh, if you combine Lerner Park and Keller Alpine and the other park space. So the library is asking to use four acres of that. And I agree with a few of the speakers who've said it would be a great educational opportunity to have a well-designed library on the upper part of that acreage, on the upper part of Alpine Keller where the cornfields are now, it would be a great educational opportunity to expose families and children to the wonders of that natural area. If the, if the village would decide not to build at Keller Alpine, I would really like to see some type of conservancy agreement saying that nothing will be built on that property. Because if the village decides not to build the library there and then in the future wants to put something else in that's less desirable, I think that would be a really big shame. So I think it should be considered as an, an educational option to cite the library at Keller Alpine, but if you do not cite it there, do not build anything else there. I guess that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you, Susan. Next speaker, or last speaker I have signed up right now is Teresa Nelson. If you'd still like to speak and haven't turned in a form, if you could take it over to our staff now so we can include you next in line. Hi, my name is Teresa Nelson. I live at 245 Drumlin Circle. And I've been a village resident for about eight years. The Keller Alpine Meadows Park area was one of the reasons that my family and I chose to live here. And I visit the park on a weekly basis. For anyone who hasn't spent much time in the park, I wonder, do you know that there are nights during the spring where it's difficult to walk or run on the path because there are so many tiny frogs jumping around and you don't want to step on them as you're going? Do you know that there are a pair of sandhill cranes that every year come back to the north area of the park? and sometimes make it hard to walk down the path because that's where they want to be. Do you know that last winter there were a couple guys who um, made fat tire bike trails through the park and they also were really great places to snowshoe. And they did that through the tree line um, behind where the, the site is proposed. Or have you ever stopped in your car along Netherwood and gotten out to help a turtle cross the road so it doesn't get squished? To so many of us, this park provides a lot of enjoyment, solace, 
discovery and recreation, not to mention the home that it provides to wildlife and other nature. Building a library in this space would change it. For me, it would diminish it. But just to end, I'm reminded of the saying, you protect what you love. And after listening to all the comments at the listening sessions and the board meetings, it's very clear to me that there are a lot of people in this village that, that love the village, that love the library, that love our natural spaces. And we're lucky to live in a community where people care so much. Thank you for providing these opportunities for our voices to be heard. Thank you so much, Teresa. I like that you um, recognized how great it is to have so many people that care so passionately about our village and our library. And I really uh, you know, echo those sentiments that Teresa just said. I really appreciate all of you taking the time out of your day to come today to talk to us. So thank you so much. Was there anybody who wanted to ch have a chance to speak that hasn't gotten one already today? Can you can please come forward and state your name. I'm sorry, I was writing my comments when you were collecting them. So That's okay. Prepared. Please go ahead. <laughs> um, I have a question, a couple questions and a comment, if that's okay. Could you state, state your name? My name is Shirley Miller. Uh, I live at 134 East Richard Road. Um, and again, as so many of the other speakers have said, I want to thank you all for being here and, and giving these multiple sessions. I know that OPN has designed some wonderful libraries um, because I've been, I'm a library supporter. Um, I've worked in multiple public libraries in different states and um, I even served on a library board in Freeport, Illinois when we built a library in the early 2000s. So I feel your angst through this process. Um, I am concerned about all the talk about the, the area off of Alpine um, because of the nature trail and the walking trail and how that impact would, as the prior speaker said, be changed, forever changed, if they built on that land. Um, I use that trail. I know families with little children and people with their pets, and I am very concerned about how increased traffic flow in that area could dramatically change the use of that land by individuals. Um, that being said, there were a couple questions that came to mind. And there were some really great comments about multiple use libraries that have been implemented in cities like Milwaukee, for example, with commercial and rental and partnerships, which I think could be um, possibly implemented here. Um, but my questions were, has the board and the village board prioritized what they may be forced to reduce or eliminate in this project? in order to move forward to build on a site that may not be fulfilling all the needs identified at this time. Um, and I know that's a tall order and probably not something you can answer today. Um, but another thought, and, and with the gentleman a few minutes ago speaking about parking, has building the new library with first floor ground floor parking, not below the surface, but on the ground with the building above, has that been considered at all? to have those covered spaces, which would be great in a town that actually has winter, like Oregon does. Um, I, I thank you again for listening to everybody's comments, because I think everyone wants to be a part of the solution. Um, but that's all I have to say. Thank you so much. Was there anybody who didn't have a turn I'd like to come forward? Please come forward and state your name and your address. Go ahead. Yep. Hi, my name is Mary Chapman. I live at uh, 680 Southwoods Edge um, over at the Forest View um, development area near Alpine Parkway. Um, I came to the meeting today, and I thank you for all the listening sessions and all the work. I came to the meeting today thinking that um, there were three distinct um, sites that have been chosen. Um, the North Main Street, uh, the combined area where the present library is, and also the Alpine, uh, Keller Alpine Parkway site. And I guess um, I, my mind was made up because of the report back from um, Jeff um, about the North Main Street that it actually was not a viable site for the library. 
which in my mind left two other sites, um, the Keller Alpine and the present um, site, which would be a mixed use between the um, senior center and the library. To my mind, I think Oregon actually has quite a lot of green space. In fact, it sounds like we have something like 358.4 acres for a population of 11,000 compared to over at the village of Verona, which has 130 acres for a population of 13,000. So I think we do have a lot of green space here in the village. Um, however, Keller Alpine uh, Parkway is a very unique space and is enjoyed by our population. It would be a, a, a tragedy to actually, um, in, you know, in, uh, to actually build on there. I do agree with um, the expansion of the existing space to incorporate the senior center um, because I think that would be mutual, be mutually benefit for both, um, have mutual benefic benefit space. However, it sounds like that at this stage, um, there still is a lot to be worked out. Um, you were talking about needing a four acre space, 33,000 square foot building. So I think there's a lot of work that still needs to be done in the background before we actually come to this decision of like where this library actually needs to be put. Um, I would um, urge that we go back to the drawing board and look at other sites that the village has that would be a lot more suitable for this building of the library and um, have further discussions once we know exactly what we actually want and, um, and get further input from the village, uh, from uh, our, our population, our people here in the village, um, and uh, then have further listening um, sessions. Um, because it sounds like at this stage that we really don't know exactly what we really want at this stage. Um, thank you for letting me to speak. Um, and um, I look forward to um, further <coughs> developments and hearing more of what other people think too. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to take a 15 minute break. Um, as we've covered everybody who's um, arrived here that would like to speak so far. So we will stick around till noon since that was when the advertising or the listening session was planned to end. So if anybody does arrive, we'll have staff in the lobby greeting them and then we'll, we'll let them have a chance to speak. Um, you're welcome to head out for the day. I don't know if we'll have anybody else join us or not, but we'll come back in 15 minutes if anybody new has joined us and give them a chance to speak if they'd like. Thank you so much for your time today. Um, again, we have the the, um, the link to the online web form. If you'd like to ask our staff on your way out, they can give you a, a link to the form for you to fill out and leave any feedback you have that way if you haven't um, felt comfortable speaking out loud. Thank you. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you.